So welcome back to the channel. Uh, in this little video, what I want to do is continue a bit more of a review of these three phase rotation meters. And I'm actually going to dismantle them and take a look inside. Primarily I'm interested in the input protection that these three instruments are specifying. Uh, this one's CAT3, 600 volts, as is the Fluke as well, CAT3, 300 volts. But this is CAT4, 600 volts uh, for the B-amp probe. So. Yeah, I'll have a little deco inside them and see what they look like. Okay, so we've got into all three of the phase rotation meters. We've got the peak meter on the left here, um, completely solid plastic case all around it. Three A batteries, a separate battery compartment lid that comes away completely, and the retaining screw is not retained within the lid, so easy enough to lose. Next to it we have the Fluke 9062, um, you can see a uh, solid plastic case but we have the rubber uh, surround to go around it. This one is operating on a 9 volt PP3, again the battery compartment lid screw is not retained and this one is actually a little plastic countersunk screw so not the nicest of screws for long term life I wouldn't have thought. Over on the right there, we have the amp probe unit. Again, this has a, it's a rubber boot, but it's much thinner than the Fluke unit. Um, battery is two times AA. The battery compartment lid, uh, the fastener is retained within the lid. So plus one for that against the other two. We jiggle everything around. I'll have a closer look at the actual boards. Right, this is the close-up view of the peak meter unit. Uh, as you can see here, PCB is pretty clean. No real major problems on this side. There's a bit of solder residue over here. Um, the board is actually hardwired onto the battery pack here, so not so easy to remove. Not that way actually. Um, on this side, there's a bit more solder residue here. Um, you can see. These two here are the inductors for the uh, magnetic pickup of the phase rotation when held against a motor. And at the other end of the board here, you've got the input jacks for the three phases. And these are not fixed physically onto the PCB, they're just wired in. So all the mechanical stresses are on the case for plugging and unplugging the leads. Um, now, this is CAT3. 300 volts input rating, so I'm not 100% sure how they are achieving this Because uh, when I look at the input it looks like there's Isolation slots here on the board between each phase and then the actual input Actually seems to be going through These dropper circuits here made of multiple resistors Another one over here and another one down here for the other phase and then it's off into these rectifier circuits here so I can't see anywhere along here where there's any PTCs or varistors for forming any form of other protection on the input circuit. So instrument design isn't really part of my uh, field of expertise. So uh, there could be some other factor in here that's involved in providing the cap protection that I'm not aware of. So that's peak meter. Okay, this is the fluke unit. You can see uh, differently to peak meter, the input jacks are soldered directly onto the PCB here. So it's how well the relationship is between the case and the positioning as to how much strain goes onto the PCB. These here are three neons for the phase indication. As with the other unit, this is CAT3, 300 volts. Um, similar sort of levels of protection, just the dropper circuits for each of the inputs, one there, one there, and this one here, and then onto the rectifiers. And then there is no isolation slots visible on this board that I can see. There's your three main inputs. Um, there is a fair bit of space between them, so I'm presuming that's how they're achieving some of their protection. Uh, again, little bits of solder residue kicking around, but nothing of major untoward. You two, pretty much exactly the same inductors for doing the magnetic pickup of the motor rotation, and then your LEDs there. 
and the on-off button. And this one obviously on a PP3. Uh, you can see the lead does get a bit crushed going through the case. Another nice little touch of the fluke here. They've hot melt glued the wires going onto the PCB to give them some support, which you don't see on the pick meter unit. Okay, so that's that one. Here we are with the amp probe unit. Unlike the other two units, this unit is actually cap 4 600 volts. And again, I can't really see an awful lot of difference between the input on this and the input circuits on the other two. You can see there's a fair bit of space between each of the input jacks and then straight on, even more obvious, onto the dropper circuits made up of multiple resistors before disappearing into the electronics. Down here is your, your on-off button for the actual instrument. And again, flipping them over, your two inductive pickups for the magnetic phase rotation and the jacks soldered directly onto the PCB again so a similar sort of setup to the fluke unit uh, um, slightly differently your battery connections are on a metal clip um, so no wires contained within this unit okay so yeah that's the uh, insides of each of the meters now we'll try and get them all back together Okay, that's the teardowns uh, completed. Got all the instruments back together, just about. Uh, and they still work as well, I have checked. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you found the video useful. Please uh, like and subscribe, and I'll see you again in the next video.